if I like this book, uh, there'd be a lot of people that probably wouldn't buy it. But if I don't like it, everyone that doesn't like me will probably buy it. You said you weren't impressed with it. No, not not really. No. Why not? Well, uh, we are good friends, but we don't live in the same road. He's walking on one road, and I'm living on another one, you know. He's making money, and he's in business to be a writer. That's his trip. That's not my trip. I'm not into that. And he's kowtowed himself and compromised himself to the public. I think the public is full of it. They're a bunch of ants that want to eat me up, and they feed on fear and things they're insecure about. They want to blame someone else, like a bunch of chickens pecking on each other. Well, I fell up underneath the pecking order, and I was convicted for being the father of this country. I was convicted for being Jesus Christ and the devil. Now, if that makes any sense to your reality, public, you know, there's something missing in your world. You can't blame someone for nine mayhem murders unless you want to say that I have laid plot and design to destroy you. And I'm working to save my air, my water, my trees, and my wildlife. And I'm trying to do away with society. I tried to stop Nixon, and I stopped him dead in his tracks. I tried to stop the Vietnam War, and I did it. And all the things I did, I did without breaking the law. Because your law is 1776. You've got jet airplanes going 6,000 miles an hour, and you're reading books that were written on the back of horses. Why don't you tell the public what's really going on? Why don't you tell them the water is so bad the fish can't live in it? Why don't you tell them that the polar caps are melting because you're creating so much heat with this machine? You see what I'm saying? 1987 interview. He steadfastly refused to admit guilt or show any remorse for his actions. You won't face the fact that there's a holy war moving upon the planet Earth. You couldn't see the blood splattered all over the walls. Now you say you want to blame one guy for it. I seen it. I witnessed it go by. I seen the children, what they were trying to do, and I was sympathetic with them. But you might say I'm a devil in this respect, that I never broke will or entered into anyone's circle with breaking will in any respect whatsoever. I just watched the sh flow downstream. From your words, as Mr. Emmons quotes them in this book, it's clear that you were guilty of murder, and yet he says in all his conversations with you, he never heard you express remorse. Have you never felt it? Remorse for what? You people have done everything in the world to me. Doesn't that give me equal right? I can do anything I want to you people at any time I want to, because that's what you've done to me. If you spit in my face and smack me in the mouth and throw me in solitary confinement for nothing, what do you think's going to happen when I get out of here? What do you think's going to happen to you? The things that you create in here. That was you don't feel guilty at all. There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Maybe I haven't done enough. I might be ashamed of that for not doing enough, for not giving enough, for not being more perceptive, for not being aware enough, for not understanding, for uh, being stupid. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Have you never felt remorse for the crimes you committed? What crimes? I told you I haven't committed any crimes. I don't break laws. There's no need to break a law. Why should I break the law? I'm in God's will. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel guilty for the thousands and millions of Indians that you destroyed? Do you feel guilty for the gas chambers where you've killed the Jews? Do you feel guilty for timeless, endless, how far can you go back and say guilty of what? Guilty of what? There's no need to be guilty. Then you're going to make me suffer until I say, okay, now I feel guilty. And then you feel secure now that I feel guilty? Was that going to make you feel better if I feel guilty? Uh, guilty. Hmm. I wouldn't do anything that I felt guilty about. The, the book says you get a lot of mail from people who want to follow you still. Follow me? Did you have any choice? You'll all follow me. I know. You know, you got two. You got these people over here that want to live.
You want to live? Get in line, we'll live. You don't want to live? Hurry up. <laughs> you know, the gate's open. You know, do your thing, man. Here, give them some coke. All Charlie's friends get free coke. Give them cocaine. Let them go, man. If they want to commit suicide, get some suicide parlors out there and let all them self-destructive idiots go. All the people that want to live, stop cutting down trees and stop polluting the ground. You dig? Let's clean up our, the world we live in, you know? Hey, 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 how you doing? You still in there? Is anybody there? <laughs> and you say you could never have had in the world as many followers as you have because of the sensationalism. I never had any followers. I had a lot of friends. They weren't followers. They were friends. They were people that we sat down and we were honest with. We smoked grass and we sat in a circle and looked at candles. You know, there was no followers, there was no leaders. It's just a bunch of intelligent people trying to put some order into their existence. They're, they're trying to get out from underneath what their parents left them. They're trying to get unlocked from the Second World War. They're trying to get out from the burning monk that's in the street burning himself to death because there's something's not right, something's off balance. Do you ever take it back upon yourself to say that you're responsible for Helter Skelter? Did Jerry Rubin and A.B. Hoffman and Dr. Timothy Leary take any responsibility for the children that they said that I influenced? You know, you want to drop the blame on Charlie and say it's all Charlie's fault. What did you do? I do the best thing I know how. Nothing. I f I play music and I smoke a little grass now and then because it helps me and I like to relax with it. That's about it. I don't see anything wrong with drugs. Drugs is all right if you don't misuse them. If you misuse them and you're misinformed about them, then you make a big bad thing about them. And that's what the public has done. You know, if I wanted to kill somebody, I'd take this book and beat you to death with it. And I wouldn't feel a thing. It'd be just like walking to the drugstore. But yet you want to come and say, do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Wolf Bob Ruffinich? Get Fredish Bush Bush Boogie? Get Ramich? Get you get you get you get Did you believe if you leave the Bushes? Why don't you blame the little babies? Mr. Emmons, this is a this is a very I gotta take a sh would you excuse me? Hey, you don't mind if I'm directing to the point, do you? Not at all. It don't take me to tell you that you're about 10 pounds overweight, does it? Thanks. <laughs> but I can be honest with you, Ken. If you got a game going, you know, and you need somebody for an excuse, first of all, my mother was a prostitute, and she lived in the street. So you can't very well say that I pimped my mother when she gave me some milk. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I was raised in that alley. That alley is where I live. I live in the street. I live where it's rough and it's tough and it's hard. Nobody gave me nothing. Everything I got, I had to bite for it and scratch for it. So it's the same principle when it comes down to surviving. If me and you are on the street, you're the strong one. You're the one with the power. I take second seat with you. I say, look here, girl, here's our problem. What are we going to do about it? Now, if you've got to give up a little something on the side and do what, there ain't no jealousy in me. What you do is your affair, but we're hungry here, moms. You didn't want to say it, so the broad went out and she made a few dollars. She come back and said, here, some money. I said, money, that's what we need. So I took the money. Now, the law and the government calls that pimping. I lived in Hollywood, and I had all that the Rolls Royce and the Ferrari and the pad in Beverly Hills. I had the surfboard and the Beach Boys and the Beast Keys and the Neil Diamond and the Rob Scott and the Jimmy Swift and the Elvis Presley's, Mesca Besley's and all them guys. The Dina Martins and the Nancy Sinatra's and the, and the Gaffer Saffron. Will you do it to me? I hear you're doing good, honey, and all that kind of. Will you come up to my house later? So I went through all that and I seen that was a bigger prison than the one I just got out of and I really didn't care to go back to prison. See, prison doesn't begin and end at the gate. Prison is in the mind. It's locked in one world that's dead and dying or it's open to a world that's free and alive. Drugs, LSD, I don't consider a drug. I don't consider poverty a drug. Those are more or less religiously significant awareness mind expanding apparatuses that come from the intelligence of the universe.
the reason that the girls liked me was, Hey now, hey now, I'm all around you, around you. Hey now, up on your heart I can sing through you. And I play and I sing and they say, hey man, you, you, got, you got soul in that music. And I said, yeah, I, I play a little bit, you know. I like music. And they said, man, you're really somebody. I said, oh, I am? Oh, I just got out of jail. I don't know what somebody is. They like my music. They say, man, we want to get you over. I said, get me over for what? They said, we take you down here to Beverly Hills and we want to get you in with because you're a star. I said, I'm a what? They said, you're a star. So they took me to the Beach Boys. And I went and I got on the surfboard and I rode around and I looked and I said, gee, Quila Chingasos, this is more... This is more trouble than what I just got out of. You got nine, nine, look at yourself. You got to wear that, whether you like it or not. You got to do things. You got to get up and go through all kinds of changes. Whether you want to or not doesn't matter. Your whole life is put in your paycheck. I don't, you couldn't pay me all the money in the world to do something I don't want to do. If I'm shoveling the barn and you want me to go, uh, just get a rum flop, I say, no, 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 I'm doing something right here. I'm helping this blind man. Did he lie about you in this book? Lie. Now there's discrepancies in words. Words have many meanings and they lean on each other and each person has their own interpretation. I'm not talking about a philosophical hodgepodge of mythological biology bullshit that you learn in school. I'm talking the basic simple childish five-year-old truth. Yes mom I did or no mom I didn't. You know. Is this book true? True. It's true from his point of view. It's the way he sees it. It's true for the people. It's true for his wife and children. It's true for the people that want it to be true. That's when you're dealing with the public. You deal with the public off the bottom. You deal them what they want to buy and what they want to hear. There's a certain amount of honesty that exists in the world of crime. The outlaw must be honest with himself, first of all, to be able to face the things that run in the world of the outlaw. Someone comes to me and says, we're going to kill so-and-so. I tell them, huh? What do you think about that? No, I don't think about it. I'm not mad at him. I don't even know it. They said, well, we're going to get him. I said, well, what do you want me to do? They said, you want to come with us and help us? I said, nope. I'm not breaking no laws this time. I'm not breaking no laws this time. Can't that come into your brain? I did not break the law. Jesus Christ told you that 2,000 years ago. You don't understand me. That's your trouble. Not my fault because you don't understand me. I don't understand you either. But I don't spend my whole life trying to put the blame over on you because my cigarette didn't light or because something didn't work right. What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. I don't need to kill anyone. I think it. I have it here. I don't need to live in this physical realm. I walk around in the physical realm and I put on the faces and I talk and I play and hang yeah, it's this big act, man. In the spiritual world is where I live. I exist in places you never even dreamed of. I don't fit in society and I am incompetent. I've never been a success at anything. I even got to the point where I didn't want to be a success at anything. What would be a success? What does that mean? You know? Money? Oh, I've had all the money in the world three times and I had to give it back. That's a stupid little game, you know. I hardly even think about too much. It's hard for me to remember breakfast. In fact, if I didn't have two or three girls to help me, I would pretty much be lost and I wouldn't know what the hell I'm doing. And my whole life I've burglarized the grocery store, stole some nickels and dimes, busted open a stamp machine, stole a few automobiles, and cashed a couple checks. I'm a petty car thief. I've, uh, been with prostitutes and bums and winos and all my life. The street is my world. I don't, uh, I don't pretend to go uptown and be anything fancy. I can, but I find more real in the world that I'm in than I do the tinsel. And the real world is the one I have to deal with every day. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. My children are coming. I told you 20 years ago. I told the judge, can't you see what you're doing here? He didn't care. Nobody cared. Only a handful of children cared. They cared enough to give their all.
That delusion that its, its society stinks and, and needs to be punished will probably die an hour after he does. Murderer. That's the damnest thing in the world. Murderer. When you go to the abortion clinics, is that murder? When you take a man's life day at a time in a cage, do you feel guilty about that? All these kids you got locked up in these cages over here, do you feel guilty about it? Do you feel guilty? you feel like your money's got blood on it? When you take in your news media and you lead a whole wave of children into gangbusters and you lead them into Rambos and combats and they all go off and they go off in some crazy, let me take you down to strawberry fields. Bottom line is this, you guys are going to have to take responsibility for some of this yourself. Take it off of me, put it where it belongs. Make sense? You'd agree with anything you agree. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> so here you come. You want to peck on the murderer, the, the devil and the hippie cult leader and the no good guy, Dick. Okay? I'm in the will of a five year old. I go in the vision room and all the kids run over, so they won't let me in the vision room because all the kids come over to play, man. And he get up in my lap, and the little five year old get up in my lap and he'll say, I'm Charlie Manson. Give me your money. <laughs> he takes their money away from him and he laughs. He's only five. But that would make me a bad guy because you would say I was influencing him. But how about him? Is he influencing me? I'll tell you what it boils down to. I never grew up. Everybody else grew up. And I didn't grow up. I'm still a little kid. In my, I don't read too well and I don't write too well. And I don't want to learn. I'm satisfied with being stupid. But I still, no matter how far I go, I can't get away from politics. I can go to Death Valley and dig a hole and hide in it. And I can't get away from politics. There's only one way I can be free. I've got to rule the world. Now, is that insane? back to solitary confinement and when you all leave do you feel guilty that a man has spent 18 years of solitary confinement in the united states of america why don't you go ask the russians if, you know if you can help them with your human rights and here's another thing i'd like to flash on you guys all you johnny carsons and all you comedians who get up there and tell jokes about charlie manson what would you do if I was in the same room, would you tell jokes about me then? I'd like to go on the Johnny Carson show. Sam, you know, you know what this beard covers up, Johnny? You know what this beard covers? The heart. Now that's not moral. And when you go to church, and when you go to church, you ask the nuns if they won't go out and deal a little bit of ass to save some of them starving children. You want this wedding ring I got with all these X's on it? tell you having dealt with very crazy people for a long time I'm not so bad his repertoire actually isn't all that big helter skelter all just flowed helter skelter based on what I've read I'm not so bad I'm not so bad become the followers of someone like this, I'm really dangerous, and you better learn it now. Well, there's your confession right there.